Welcome in, everybody. I hope you're all having a great day. We are, and by we are, I am, it's Royal We. I'm so excited to be playing the Call Me Under demo. I've been trying to not look at things, but I can't not because, listen, have you, have you seen anything that has to do with this game? It looks fucking amazing. Um, but I don't know much in terms of the story because, uh, one, I'm a bad patron on the Patreon, and I don't read anything because I want to be mostly spoiled. Or not, not mostly spoiled. Oh, the captions are frozen. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's, let's dive. We're diving in. Di we're diving into some tentacles. Uh, this demo is rated M17 for strong language. Dark humor. Use of substances. Oh no. Good thing I've got my wine. Eldritch horrors. All characters portrayed are me. <laughs> I'm like scared right now. The beginning <gasps> was bathed in darkness. I already knew the demo was gonna have voice acting. It was darkness. Its form and its home, the most basic state of being. The inkwell from which flesh was shaped, minds were made and dreams. Were born. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Began in the shadows. Didn't we all? They nourished us, caressed us. I hope the us is me. Life. Or they, am I they? Or us? Can I just but be everybody? demanded more. Separation. Independence. A self free from the roots. Mm -hmm. Colors split from the inkwell. And a new perspective. A new meaning. Oh, that scared me. That hands literally spooked me. And so began the tale of our creator's downfall. Oh, that I know. Sure okay. You know right. Uh, yeah. Yep. I know everything. And drove the shadows to the bottom of the dark and terrible ocean. Such a simple fable. A mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. and uncomplicated way to explain the universe mm -hmm. to young. Impressionable minds. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do they recount this tale with your bedside lamp turned on so you don't feel the yes. fear creeping in? Always. I'm always afraid. Do they make the monsters with their hands in that light so you know that there's nothing in the darkness but evil? Depends on which monsters and how sexy they are. Have you ever felt just that tiny sliver of doubt that maybe they lied. I did it until just now. I did it until just now. What? Confidential? Oh, you play with my heart. I can only play as the human? <laughs> I guess, I guess we must be a human. We must be a human. Uh, excuse out my demo coming in January. Well, guess what we're doing in January? Fresh blood from the surface. A few prior convictions, but nothing I can't work with. Reason for Annie acquiring them is unknown, uh, but seemingly a decent decision on her part. My first impressions are good, but I'll refrain from forming any solid opinions after until after we've gotten into that nasty shit. Here's hoping it works out better than last time. P. Sinclair. All right, we are we are the human. Okay, so we are having arrived from the surface. You find yourself thrust into the capable hands and employment of Penelope Sinclair. <gasps> P. Sinclair. Editor of the Sticks Journal, but most significantly, leader of the Scott and S Sinclair investigations. Oh, we're a detective. Your past is shady, but your convictions are nothing but a memory here in Styx. Why is my past shady? What did I do? Call it a much needed new beginning, if you will. A second chance to start somewhere fresh where nobody knows your name. That's gonna be hard, Every, everybody knows my name. You have a job, done. That's the hardest part, we got a job. Sp pedal too much smut. Very true, horny crimes. <laughs> Back, back on the surface, back in the smut forest. They know too much. They kicked me out. 
my mushrooms, sh my penis shaped mushrooms were too much. They were like, listen, listen, you gotta get out of the forest. Moved out of the forest, went into the ocean. Uh, okay, we have a job, a place to live. Hopefully it is also shaped like a penis for our, for our smut peddling. And a host of shits that are about to be thrown into your lap. Here's hoping that your sea legs are steady. Listen, I am, I want everybody to know I'm a very good swimmer. So I'm ready. Because life is about to get real choppy. Oh my God, I love it. I love this. Settling into a new city can be a real headache and maybe even a heartache. Select character. Well, well chat, I think, I think you know it's gonna be egg toast, right? I, I feel like, I feel like this is, this is our, this is what we do. It's always egg toast. Always and forever. Egg toast under the sea. And we are they, them. The City of Sticks, November 1958. Good year, I think. The incessant tap, tap, tap of the typewriter's mechanical keys beneath my fingertips is the only thing keeping me awake. I broke the game already. I shouldn't have messed with the my keyboard. I was trying to I was trying to <laughs> I was trying to give sound effects. I'm sorry. Listen, uh smashing your face smashing your hands on the keyboard will in fact break Red Pie. This is a this is a well-known thing that happens. Red Pie problems. Fucking Red Pie problems. I will drink to fucking that. That and the stench of smoke and booze wafting from Penny's office. It's only seven. She'll have one hell of a hangover tomorrow. Again. I sigh and glare at the fresh sheet before me. I'm only a sentence in and it's already nonsense. I angrily yank at the roller and tap on, the arms whirling against the inky black ribbon. It's gonna be a late one. I sit back and stare at the words on the page, words I've seen typed out by me and my many other hands, too many times to count in the short time I've been here. Missing, kidnapped, presumed dead, dis- How ma- okay. How many times are we writing dismembered? I hear a low whistle and turn to find Penny staring at me, sticking her head around the door frame. Hey, you done yet? Oh wait, I- Are we gonna give Penny a voice? Hey, you done yet? I don't have all night, you know. I thought you were supposed to be fast. Listen, listen, I'm on it. Only one more section to type up. I've got to type a lot about dismembers mem and tentacles and erotic fan fiction. Oh shit, I should be working. She rolls her eyes and disappears back into the Scott and Sinclair investigations. Penny is the editor of the Sticks Journal and also a private, I would be the worst journalist. I would, how much erotic fan fiction did you want in your journal? Because I've got it all. Is also a private investigator when night falls. She's relentless and brilliant, but she's hard to read. Her work partner, Annie Scott, is one of the many citizens of Styx who went missing recently. Oh, that's so sad. And I don't think Penny has slept since. Yeah, I wouldn't either. And it looks like I'll be joining her with the amount of work I've got on my plate. I didn't think that taking a job at the newspaper would end up with me elbow deep in murder cases. I think I did. I think I did end disappearances. But hey, wherever the tide takes me, I guess. Listen, egg toast, if there's one thing I know about egg toast, egg toast is surrounded by murder all the time. I press play on the tape recorder and get ready to type. But what did you see? You say you blacked out after she was taken. You must have caught a look at the guy's face. That's the thing, though. Wasn't no guy. Wasn't no human. I don't know what that voice is. Yeah, you said that already. But it isn't like we have that much in the way of humans down here. So help me out. Be more specific. It wasn't one of them, either. It was... I quickly stopped the tape and watched the water in my glass ripple. The whole room trembling. <gasps> Underwater trains? I grip the edge of my desk to steady myself, but it stops after a few seconds, still long enough to throw me off. Another quake, the second today. Is it me, or did that one feel more violent? I turn and find Penny tugging on her coat, a cigarette hanging haphazardly between her lips. 
She's laden with case files, as usual. And I idly wonder if this woman ever quits. A lust quake? It's very true, Eerie. She doesn't seem to be bothered by the fact that the ocean is shaking us like fish in a bowl. But then I guess that's exactly what we are. Oh, yeah. Can I... Oh, I want to be... What kind of fish do I want to be? There's so many good fish. I don't know. No, I just want to... Listen, I just... I just want to be a squid or an octopus, something with tentacles. Should I be concerned? Smutfish. I'm a smutfish. Nah, don't fret. She waves me off as she breathes over the desk, over to my desk and yanks the paper free from the typewriter, squinting at it and sighing when she sees it isn't done. But she adds it to the messy, messy pile she has hitched under her arm anyway. These things happen. It's just the nature of sticks, my friend. You'll get used to it. Now, go home and get some rest, all right? I need you here bright and early tomorrow. Oh, and lock up for me, would ya? She doesn't wait for me to respond, and the front door swiftly slams shut behind her. I rub my eyes and will the tiredness that blurs the edges of my visions to disappear. I just want to get through this damn interview so I can go home. Then, it happens again. The lust quake. Shake, rattle, roll. Another, I got, listen. Listen, my lusts are so, so great. They shake the entire ocean. Chego, we get to choose our love interest. That's one of them. This time it's vicious. No gentle warnings or soft rumble, just full bore. Light swinging, shit. No, that does say shit, that says shit. Shit falling to the floor and cracking against the linoleum. Books falling from the shelves. My desk jumps across the room like it has a mind of its own. Sea ghosts? Fear consumes me, and I launch myself from my chair, stumbling toward the door and reaching for the handle like a lifeline. I tear it open, the walls screaming around me, the roar of what sounds like thunder rattling in my ears. <gasps> what? Oh my gosh, this is so cool! <gasps> It's like an underwater aquarium because we're like in under the water. Listen, why isn't this like the Little Mermaid, okay? Why isn't this Atlantis? I escape into the atrium and my eyes fall upon chaos. Okay, we've got the Vanguard Lounge. It's got cocktails, so you know I'm going there. I know, the seaweed is so cute. The Killing Room, we've got tarot cards. It's open. Ezra hangs out there all the time when he comes to visit. Hordes of people run from the surrounding businesses, bars, and lounges. There's a stampede coursing across the main floor. And all I can think is that I can't believe I'm the o I've only been here a few weeks. And here I am, watching it all fucking end. That's when the screaming begins. At first, I think the sound might be coming from me, but the chorus of wailing that fills my head can't possibly be human. It sounds like a wounded animal, a death knell. It chills me to my core. The sound in this game is amazing! And leaves the hairs on my arms and the back of my neck standing to attention, saluting whatever terrible thing is making that damn noise. I close my hands over my ears and try to shut it out. Try to push forward and get the hell out of here. I look up as I run and I notice that the glass that encases us is holding. So at least today might not be the day I die a watery death. But then, a flash. A violent blind, how did you do this? Okay, we, got, we gotta talk, we gotta talk Ren Pie after this. A violent blinding light, the edges of my vision blurring, shifting. And then, Everything goes quiet. Not a sound. Not a whistle. Okay, that's even more creepy. I stand still and close my eyes tight enough that it hurts. Pain blooming bright behind my eyelids. Next come the voices. Oh, please be mermaids. Voices that aren't mine. Voices that echo and shift. A terrible cacophony of crying, wailing, laughing. Then, my mind fills with a vision of a face. Oh, I mean, that's a pretty damn good face! Blue eyes, 
hair as black as the night. He stares down at his hands, and every inch of them is painted in a terrible and unmistakable crimson. <laughs> they shake, his long fingers trembling, and he drops them to his side in what looks like defeat. Oh, classic, classic V, classic Lunaris V. I'm very, I'm very happy. Okay, read slower. Okay, okay, okay. What is it? How do I get rid of the box? I should know this, but I don't. It's a J? H? I was close. There we go. Let's... Ban Alina for backseating, right? <laughs> let's all... Let's all take it in. You know what? You know what I miss, though? I miss the glitched out long pan-ups. Those were my favorite because you had to sit there and you had to watch and it was glorious. <laughs> he got in the paint again. I know. Because if that was blood, it would be brown. Then he's looking right at me. <laughs> Messy ketchup. This always happens when I eat hot dogs. I just, I just get bloody handprints on me everywhere. He sees me. See, see me. I snap back into the waking world with a pa what? That was a vision? With a painful jolt, my temples throbbing, and then comes total silence. Clarity, the calm after a terrible storm. Listen, my visions are very sexy. Can I just say that? I look around and my vision is clear again. No, come back, vision, vision, come back! No blurring, no bloodied stranger staring directly into my heart and my soul. I take a deep breath and shake my head, blinking myself free of whatever that was. And I look down just to check that it, I'm still whole. Well, I'm still whole, but I have a massive boner, so there's that problem. Something catches my eye, a flash of red in its neon lights. <laughs> I look down at my hands and find them covered in <gasps> Oh! I got into the hot dogs too! What the- oh shit, did I- I'm the murderer, aren't I? I'm- I'm the heckin' murderer! I did a murder! That's when everything turns to black. <laughs> Are we the baddies? I wake early and I don't remember how I got home, but I do know that my sleep was fitful and plagued with nightmares. Nightmares of bloodied palms. I mean, that's- is that- Depending on what kind of dream we're having, that may not be a nightmare. That could be a, a hot mirror. What are those called? Sex dreams. A familiar faces of the sounds of something dark and terrible calling out to me. <laughs> it's a wonderful day here in Styx. The streets are bustling and alive with citizens going on about their day, even at this horrendously early hour, and yet everything unsurprisingly feels a little off. I still can't recall how I got home last night, but I do remember standing in this very spot and having what I can only assume was a total mental breakdown. I look down at my hands and find them clean, much to my relief. It's only the 20th time I've checked since I woke up with the world's most horrific headache that just won't seem to quit, and a terrible feeling that there's something serious going on inside this brain of mine. I mean, Joe, wet dream would be very appropriate, especially under the water. Stealing myself, I look down at the address that I tore from the notice board outside the Vanguard's lounge yesterday morning after it caught my eye, which seems kind of like a sign right now. As if I anticipated something like this would happen without realizing it. Dr. Archimedes Suchita? Is that how you say that name? I'm sorry, Archimedes. He sounds legit, right? I mean, he's got doctor in his name. After the night I had, I can't say that I'm in the position to be too picky with finding the right practitioner. Discretion is highly des- Suchita, thank you. Discretion is highly desired. I'm not about to draw too much atten attention to myself when I'm fresh off the submarine. Do we actually get to take submarines down here? Cause that's badass. And so, into the depths of Asphodel I go. Okay, okay, let's see. We got a lot of skulls. We got some 
Isn't that a portrait of Callie? We got a, we got a mermaid. I'm in the right place. We got bugs. We got a starfish. We got a fireplace. We got a grandfather clock. What kind of doctor is this person? Yes, okay. 100%. Uh, Chris, when you and Anna come visit, we're, we're hecking going to Paxton Gate. I can make your office exactly like this. We'll just, like, buy you... I'll just buy you Paxton Gate. I'll just buy you the business. It's fine. If I could. And now I have an unbearable headache. Call me Archie nods, his eyes still firmly fixed upon the clipboard in his lap. How about, can I call you, I wish you were naked? To, hello, Archie, hello. He's writing, but I don't know whether he's writing something related to me or if he's just, I don't know, doodling flowers or whatever. <laughs> the doctor of hot. <laughs> the romance doctor. I don't have the energy to care, and my patience, get it? Get it? Is wearing thin with every pulse of my heartbeat, which sends a throbbing lance of pain through my temples. It feels worse than if someone had decided to stuff cotton in my brain, like a sponge with a giant merciless hand squeezing it over and over. But I've paid to be here, and there's a shelf of interesting bottles filled with questionable things staring at me behind Dr. Wait, wait, Sue, God. Hold on, I gotta write this down. Suchida. 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 Beautiful office desk. I guess I'd better behave long enough for him to give me something for this pain. And then I can be out of here. Listen, I just... It's 1950, give me some fucking laudanum, please. This is a nice office, too. He's already apologized profusely because his clinic downstairs is undergoing renovations. So he has to see me up here. But you won't find me complaining, complaining about sitting on fine leather. And you hadn't been drinking? I... No, I didn't last night. Though I considered it this morning. If your office had been hard to find, I might have slipped into Leith's and taken my chances with a whiskey bottle instead. Why do you think I picked this spot for the clinic? <laughs> Suchi Daddy, oh my god! <laughs> Suha, yes! It's perfect. I snore reflexively, then squeeze my eyes shut when my head throbs again. This is getting annoying. <laughs> yep. Might as well, time to rewrite the entire game. <laughs> now I, Suhana, I just can't unsee it. <laughs> Dr. Suchi Daddy. Gets out his plush chair, as I hoped he would. He opens the cabinet full of mystery bottles, takes out a few, then rummages for something from another lower shelf. With a questionable smile, he hands me a shot glass full of some vicious, viscous looking, not vicious, luminous green liquid. Laudanum's not green. It shouldn't be. Okay. <laughs> oh... Listen, I don't, I'm, I, listen, if we're going fancy 1950s under the water style, I'm gonna be bossy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a little bit fancy, okay? Don't suppose you'd serve this in a prettier glass. Don't suppose you could consider serving this in a prettier glass. Listen, you can't, you can't just give me this mason jar and expect me to drink out of it. I swirl the liquid suspiciously, and it's viscous. The light refracts through the toxic green color rather attractively, but I know that just means the shit is going to burn its way on its way down. In my experience, the nastier something looks, the better it works. I mean, yeah. Remember hypnotic? And give you the illusion of luxury? I like to be honest with my patients. Don't worry. It's worth it after the first three seconds. Well then. Prost? 
I take a deep breath, brace myself, and then knock it back in one. It's bitter. It doesn't burn, but I might have preferred that to the horrendous taste slithering down my throat. I sl <laughs> Chris, you can't write anything without me feel without me reading it and then thinking it's just insanely dirty. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been ruined. <laughs> I'm not pure enough for your game. <laughs> I slam the shot glass down into the desk and gesture desperately for something, anything else to drink. Archie thrusts a glass of water into my hands. I mean, he does know I'm, I am always thirsty. Is he smirking? Am I about to die? The water thankfully washes the horrific aftertaste out of my mouth. See, three seconds, like I said. I felt much longer than that. My head is also still throbbing dully. Now with the added effects of ringing ears and extra misery of having ingested something that nasty. Listen, I would never ingest anything nasty. The bottle of whiskey I have been daydreaming about is feeling less like a treat and more like a necessity at this point. Arthur! So lewd! Which, yeah, which head is throbbing? That's, that's a valid point. It was three seconds. Don't worry, I counted. He cheerfully takes the water from my hand and nudges me to relax in the uh, admittedly very comfortable chair. His smile be... beatific? Beti beatific and strangely reassuring. Now, since you took it orally, it's going to... Re Chris, that's... that... That's... that... that is not my fault! That is your writing! You wrote it like that. What else am I supposed to think about? It's going to require a little while to fully take effect. Does that mean I get to fall asleep? Because I could do with the rest. No. Then why did you give me your... Why did you give your patient such an inviting chair? Usually I don't. That chair is for personal guests. I suppose getting my clinic wrecked by ungrateful bastards does benefit some. You're the filth. I just want Archie to call me filth, apparently. You're the fifth person to come at comment about that chair. You get that many patients? He sighs deeply. Probably too many. Others are also happy just to pay me a fee and talk my ears off. Then I'd say you're doing a nice job stealing the bartender's business from down the street. Don't tell him that. Or I've no doubt my tab will find itself inflating mysteriously. Filth is the new glaze. <laughs> Morgan, I'm fine with that. Oh, and since you're here... Archie ducks behind his desk, emerging a moment later with what looks to be a stack of tapes. Suddenly, I have a feeling. You are the egg toast, correct? Yep. Penny's new uh, recruit. Does Miss Sinclair know everybody in this city? If she does, I wouldn't be surprised. But she did tell me specifically that her new hire is going to be helping her transcribe some important tapes I promised her. I would have stopped by to deliver them myself this morning, but here I am, held up with a patient, a patient complaining of a headache. Okay, okay, okay. I, I am filth. I'm sorry. I'm ruining your day, Archie. Talk about lucking out, huh? I hold out my hand for the tapes, but Archie tuts and shakes his head. He opens a different cabinet in the room, pulls out a roll of twine, and then starts sorting through the tapes and tying them together. Were they all just in a pile in your drawer until this morning, or did you just forget to finish this final step? That terrible headache of yours must have gone away by now. With all that sass out of your mouth... I think I love Archie. It's then that I realized that it has actually, not completely. But the discomfort is so minimal that I didn't notice much of anything aside from the fact my head feels weirdly heavy. Like it's full of secrets or something. Suha. <laughs> Dr. Suchi Daddy. Archie. Archie, Archie. Thank, thank God we're on a first name basis now. 
Do you know anything about the murders and disappearances? Archie says nothing. He finishes typing up the tapes in neat piles, then produces a brown paper bag to drop them onto. He hands it to me. No, I don't, and it bothers me a great deal. Now, go home. Rest up. Ah, uh, doctor says I get the day off! I smile wryly. Not likely after you've dropped all this work into my lap. Maybe I can, maybe I can work from home. Just tell Penny it's doctor's orders. Yes! I'm gonna need that signed. I'm gonna need a doctor's note signed. Maybe I can rest at your house, Archie. She can take it up with me if she feels like it. It's been a long while since I've seen her anyway. Right, thanks. See you around, I guess. Not if you're lucky. It's a little, that's a doctor humor. I have a weird feeling in my gut that I won't be lucky. That I'll be seeing more. <laughs> of Archie! I can't do it. I just can't. Before I head to the office, I get a weird desire to check out the strange little shop that's caught my eye more than a few times since I landed here. Nestled between Tyke's Luck, <gasps> there's a casino, and a beauty salon sits the Killing Moon. Its colorful window, uh, full of charms, oddities, and multiple posters, insisting that the incredible Eve can tell me my fortune and what I ate for breakfast. I wonder if this Eve could offer me a little insight into what the hell is going on in this head of mine. I lean in and closer. I lean and closer. I lean and take a closer look on one of the posters. <gasps> They're so pretty! The ultimate master of divination with a direct link to the spiritual plane and the supernatural regions beyond. Always a skull. Interesting. Well, I guess it can't hurt to try. Listen, I got the day off. Let's go fuck around town. Into the unknown. Look, it's Anna. <laughs> oh! Ezra's insanely jealous of this shop right now. I can hear him. All the way from Lunaris. The bell above the door jingles quietly as I step inside, and I'm immediately hit with the overwhelming smell of incense and a maelstrom of scented candles. It's all lavender. Strange music plays on the record player that sits in... This is... Ev Literally, this is every shop in Portland I've ever been to. And the shop appears to be totally vacant. I peruse the shelves and run a finger over the jagged point of a crystal, leaning into it... Leaning in to stare at the, w the whirls of different purples. You're a curiosity, aren't you? A more precious bauble than any in this shop. And look at the tides have washed you right in. Listen, I, I know. I know how to turn me on. <laughs> oh. I turn quickly and watch as a fiery-haired wisp of a human in a lace gown, the same color as their pale skin approaches, from where I'm not entirely sure. Amethyst. Excellent for migraines and nausea. They reach for the crystal and cradle it in their palms. Oh my gosh. Look at their jewelry. So good. I'm very excited to cosplay Eve. <laughs> All I need is a lace dress and I'm ready to go. Closing their eyes, their copper lash is fluttering. It almost looks as if they're whispering to it. Right? Hey, Eve, you okay there? These two better fucking make out right now. Chris, if they don't, if they don't just drop down and start fucking on the floor, I'll be very upset. I'll be very upset. <laughs> Another customer approaches, their golden eyes flickering between this, Eve, and myself curiously. They offer me a lopsided smile, one that looks almost apologetic. Eve exhales sharply and opens their eyes. Oh, Adrian! They turn to me and eagerly press the crystal into my hands. Forgive me. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to give Eve a, a southern accent. 
Forgive me, sometimes I get a little carried away. The other customer laughs awkwardly, still apparently trying to break the weird tension. It's sexual tension, it's not weird, and it, it's fine. That seems to be sucking the life out of this room. And then Eve sets their sights on them. One moment. Eve scans the shelves, their hands in the air as if asking for silence. And they laugh wickedly when they apparently spot what they're searching for. Oh, there's... Oh, they're so cute! I love them both. They shove a crystal at their other at the other customer's chest. This one is lavender and gold. Am Ametrine for clarity. Good for scaring away procrastination and they sniff the air. Other unsavory things. Like farts. I have to leave this shop. Everyone is too hot. I have to go. Goodbye. The golden eyed stranger's cheeks flare pink. And they laugh nervous, nervously, looking anywhere other than at myself or Eve. They reach into their bag and retrieve a wad of money to wave at Eve, apparently eager to give it to their over-curious shopkeep to shut them up. I think I might do the same. As Eve quickly disappears behind the cash desk, the stranger turns to me and scrambles to hold the ridiculously oversized crystal in one hand, offering me the other. I'm Adrian. Sorry about that. Well, them... They're sweet, just a little intense, you know? Yeah, I got that. So, are you new around here? I mean, if you want me to be new, yeah, whatever you want, Adrian. That obvious. Adrian shrugs sheepishly. Sheepishly. Anyway, here lies your first lesson. Eve will sell you a crystal that costs a week's rent, and it'll, all it does will give you hives. You can't trust a soul around here, especially not when they smile at you. Wait, wait. <laughs> then, completely lacking any irony, Adrian offers me a huge, sharp tooth grin. Before I can reply, Eve loudly clears their throat, their eyes widening when we both turn to stare at them. Adrian clears their throat and glances down at the crystal Eve deposited in their palm. Clarity, you said. Eve nods enthusiastically, their skinny fingers clasped as if they're about to drop their knees and pray. I have a strange sense that you might need some, yes. Adrian exhales, glancing out into the atrium almost wistfully. They smile as they deposit their money upon the counter, but that smile doesn't reach their eyes. I think you might be right, yeah? Eve looks at me expectantly. And you? Fuck it, I'm buying the crystal! We gotta do it! We gotta do it. They're a siren? No wonder. No wonder I was taken. Taken aback. Listen. <laughs> My favorite accent making a comeback. Listen. I've got four of them. I sigh and reach into my pockets. Can't hurt, right? Eve nods, reaching out to the count the coins from my palm. Too many for a pretty rock, if you ask me. I'm sure it'll brighten up your place, right? I nod and smile again. And Adrian is clearly just playing along, as regretful of their new unwanted item as I am, it would appear. Oh, we didn't catch your name. It's... it's Egg. Eve shakes the hand I offer them with both of theirs, smiling sweetly until they're not. They pull away quickly, almost as if I shock them. I am a murderer. Fuck. I murdered everybody and they know it. Everyone knows it but me. Their skin turning a shade paler. They glance at Adrian for a split second before they compose themselves and offer an obviously smorced file smile. It shakes at the edges. Right, well, it's very nice to meet you, Egg. <gasps> Eve hates me! Eve can't hate me! Eve, you can't hate me! That's not fair! Something tells me it wasn't. Now, please, excuse me, I have a reading in a moment, so I need to go prepare. The spirits won't talk to themselves. 
They wave once and they're gone. The curtain that separates the shop from the back room swishingly violent. Violent. Swishing violently. Huh. That was weird. Oh, they can sense. They can sense my evilness because they're an empath. I raise a brow at them. Weirder than usual. I'm glad I'm not the only one who noticed. I better dash too. Nothing personal. I have to get to work. All my friends are leaving me. It was a pleasure to meet you, Egg. Really. If you're ever in my neck of the water, then stop by my studio sometime. Wh I'm always looking for faces to paint. Listen, I, I listen, Adrian. I got the day off. You need a you need a face to paint. We can find you a better one than this, but I'll watch you paint. Their cheeks flush as they hand me a small business card. Paint me like one of your sticks, girls. An artist, huh? You flatter me. Go on, tell me more about how you want to paint me. Adrian shrugs and tucks a strand of their hair behind their ear, heading for the door. Always nice to make new friends, right? Styx is a... Listen, you don't paint your friends. You paint the people you want to bone. Styx is a big place distinctly lacking honest folks, and something about you tells me that you're one of the good ones. So, stop by sometime. I want lemon every... Okay, Arthur, you have to share your lemon poppy seed cake with the class now. See you around. I wave and watch them go. Now I'm alone. Can we, can I be surrounded by hotties again? That was preferable to me being alone. In the middle of the killing moon, feeling heavier than I did before I entered, crystal notwithstanding. When I walk into the office, I find Penny sitting at my desk. She glares at me over the top of the typewriter, her eyes glued to me as I make my way over to the desk and deposit the bag of Archie's tapes in front of her. This better be good, considering you've been gone for almost half of your shift. Listen, I can't promise it'll be good. They're from Archie. Dr. Suchi Daddy. He said he was planning on dropping them by. Penny's blue eyes light up, and she eagerly dips a hand inside the bag, counting the contents with a growing smile. That son of a bitch. He knew he'd come through. While she's occupied with whatever juicy content Archie has supposedly provided, They're just going to be porn tapes, aren't they? I notice a new missing person poster has been added to the case board. My heart sinks when I look at the grainy picture. That face. <gasps> Beautiful man of my dreams. Juicy content. Is it an Anavod? What? I did not. I wasn't done looking. Game. 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 You can, I wasn't done. I reach out unconsciously, almost as if compelled, and I feel sickness coiling in my gut, like I know this man, like I've had visions of sexiness. Bring it. Bring it back. How do we undo? Like he means something, but I've never seen him before. Of that much, I'm sure. Not in the way that would make me feel this way. Anyway, it's called love. Egg. You're in love. Oh yeah, I need to brief you on this one. Penny's voice snaps me from my daze and she flicks the poster, leaning against the board with a resigned sigh. His name is Egan Castor. His brother came to my apartment after a quake and a mad panic. Apparently, he disappeared last night under suspicious circumstances. But that's all I managed to get out of the crazy bastard before he ran off. Men. Listen. I stare at her, not quite being able to bring myself to respond. The face on the poster still drawing me in, urging me to look. Penny tilts her head curiously and frowns at me. Earth to egg. You all right there, champ? You look a little peaky. I nod vacantly, plastering a smile across my lips. I just had a bad night. No sleep, headache. Must have been the quake. Huh? Yeah. You're still adjusting, I suppose. Anyway, let me tell you all about this caster guy. Get your fingers... Get your typing fingers ready. It's a long story. I dutifully take my seat at the desk, typing a fresh piece of paper between the rollers. And for the next two hours, Penny recounts the tale of Blue and Egan Caster, and why the latter 
going missing seems missing holds some degree of significance in the long and winding web that Sticks seems to be weaving around us. Hi, Jenny. What are you What are you cooking me for dinner? Two flour, it's fine. Just preemptively think of the jokes and then it'll be perfect. I'm gonna need a drink. Well, good thing I have this wine. <gasps> I want to be here right now. I literally, like literally, I want to be here. This is, this is my type of bar. I want to be here. I have, I've been so, like, this week more than most weeks, I've been so sad and missing friends and, like, it's, like, the end of the year and I've just been thinking about all the conventions that I haven't got to go to because, you know, obviously, and it's just, it's been really sad. I really miss, take my Eldrick wife, please. I just miss, I miss everybody. I miss everybody. It didn't take much for Penny to persuade me to join her. Listen, you said why, and I was there. In her nightly journey to the Vanguard, her arms once again laden with case files and paperwork. Ain't, th this is me while writing. I just go to the, well, not anymore. I used to go to my local bar and just get wine and then just sit and write arcade spirits. Although I never find myself with a pile of my own tonight, both of us sit at the bar, papers strewn out in front of us, while the cute blonde bartender keeps our glasses full. The lounge is packed, the air thick with a layer of smoke, like it has its very own atmosphere. I don't know if I believe that he's missing. If you meet his brother, you'll understand why. I'd want to get the hell away from, okay. Well, now I just, now I just want to sleep with his brother. That's all you've done, Penny. You've all just, you've just enticed me. But you said they seem close, so why would he just disappear with no good reason? Penny shrugs and stab and stubs her cigarette out on the ashtray before her, quickly lighting another. I guess that's for you to find out, huh? She smiles and exhales, the smoke hitting my face. Listen, secondhand smoke, Penny. Right, 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 right. Then the lights dim and a single spotlight illuminates the stage at the far end of the lounge, a figure appearing in its bright, unforgiving beam. The music swells, a cool, lazy rhythm, something that lure you to sleep if you weren't hopped up on the thrill of simply being here. Even under the thrum of the bass, I hear Penny's breath hitch. Heck, mine does too because the silhouette is a damn fine one, all dangerous curves and a walk that tells you that whoever it Whoever it is knows their appeal and how to work it. Ah, oh, she's so pretty! I lean in to whisper in Penny's ear, my eyes still on the stage. Who, who, who is that? Because I'm in love, again. She swats me away without so much as offering me a glance, totally fixated. Shh, no talking. And then the songbird begins to sing. Red lips, tight curls, eyes as gold as the sun, and that voice. Like honey, dripping and smooth. She's compelling enough to make me believe she's singing about me, for me, and only me. Well, I am a narcissist, so. With the, ev with the way everyone else is in the room staring at her, I gather they feel the same. To say I'm transfixed would be an understatement. Though some swiftly, something swiftly pulls me from my daze. A terrible chill rolls down my spine. A full body shudder that has goose, goose flesh prickling up upon my skin. I feel the same way I did last night. Listen. Like I'm about to get lost in a dream. Vision. Whatever the fuck that was. Then I see him. Him, the mystery man. Bringer of the world's biggest pain in the ass of a migraine. He stands at the opposite end of the bar, all tall and looming. Maybe he's a witch, something haunting and dark. A creature like the ones they say wander sticks at night if you get too close to the shadows. Eerie, oh no, the throbbing is back. 
Listen. Listen, I don't think it's gone away since we started this game. The bluest eyes I've ever seen focus in on me. Like, he's heard everything I'm thinking about him. He scowls at me from behind a curtain of ink black hair, and I can hear my own heartbeat rushing in my ears. The music of that songbird's voice, a mere echo. Like I'm underwater, but in a more literal sense. The shadow man narrows his eyes, and I decide there's definitely something other about him. Something both missing and too much to fathom. He averts his gaze quickly, like he's been shocked out of our little staring contest, and the room seems to shudder, my ears popping, and then everything is back to normal. Only then, then do I register Penny snapping her fingers in front of my face, and if looks could kill... Hey, you drunk already or something? I shake my head because my tongue feels too heavy for me to form words, and Penny simply sighs, resigning herself to the fact that I'm a terrible company, I assume. I would feel bad if it wasn't for the existential crisis I seem to be having. Penny suddenly stiffens beside me, her back going ramrod straight, and her unlit cigarette almost falling from between her lips. She scrambles to catch it. <gasps> Look at that blush! And I hear her, a husky laugh right behind me. Penny looks up, her eyes are wide, and her cheeks beat red. Gay panic time? Fuck. I turn to find the culprit, the one who apparently has the ability to render me usually my unusually unshakable boss useless. And there stands the songbird, even more beautiful up close. Penelope, I see you've brought the office here with you as always. Should you really be drinking on the job? Penny merely scowls and angrily fumbles for her lighter, refraining from responding. The songbird simply sighs, shrugging at me with pursed lips like she's used to this kind of reception. And who is this? Another of Miss Sinclair's victims? Her perfect red lips curl at the corners as she offers me a hand. Penny swears quietly under her breath and, fills, and finally gets a flame out of the lighter, her relief apparent. Oh... Oh, oh, what do we choose? I feel like I've been sassy. Uh, the, one, uh, the one choice we've had, I've been sassy, so I should be sassy. I guess I am, yeah. I should probably bite my tongue, but this woman appears to be eager to tease, and I'm all aboard that particular train. Especially if it makes Petty blush like that again. Egg toast. And I guess you could say I'm her victim, yeah. Oh, look at the little heart icon! Oh, I love it! The songbird laughs heartily and takes my hand, shaking it firmly. That's the spirit. Arcade spirits. Glad to see she finally found someone with a sense of humor. I'm Callie Seymour. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Egg. Likewise. Screw you both. Callie lays it on thick and pouts, fluttering her lashes at Penny. Aw, oh, come on now. Don't be like that, sweetheart. I actually need to steal away your boss egg. Oh, your boss, comma, egg. <laughs> I, listen, I thought I was the boss for a second. I hope you don't mind, but it's a private matter. How private are we talking? You said that last time. I talked my ear off about your ba bass player cheating on his wife for an hour. Time is money. Uh, Calipi? Is that how you say that name? Don't give me that shit, Pen. I have solid information. Is that intriguing enough to make me uh, taking up on your oh-so-precious time worthwhile? Penny clears her throat and begins to gather up the papers that she'd strewn across the countertop, stuff stuffing them back on the flyers and then under her arm. She stands throwing me in an unapologetic glance. Call it a night. I need you in early tomorrow to make up for the time we lost today, all right? Sure thing, boss. She actually smiles at that, and I feel like, oh, they're gonna go have romance time. And I feel like I got awarded a gold star! Look at me! Gold star! Calliope. Calliope, okay. A for effort, but then she inhales sharply and squares her shoulders, her gaze meeting Callie's as she pushes past me. 30 minutes, max. I need an early... Penny, you're not gonna get an early night. I'm saying that right now. 
Ha, that's rich. And then Penny is off, pushing through the crowd and heading who knows where. I right, know where. Callie huffs and begins to follow her on towering red heels, but she stops, spins, and offers me a polite wink and a wave. It was nice to meet you. Before I get the chance to respond, they're both gone, engulfed by the sea of swaying people. It's then that I feel that shift again. Eyes on me, staring, burning into the back of my head. I turn slowly and attempt at being subtle. I'm never... A egg toast is not subtle. If we've learned anything. I suppose. But something tells me that the shadow man is expecting my attention. Sure enough, he's looking right at me when I find him at the opposite end of the bar. He still has his coat on and clutches an almost empty drink like a lifeline. I slide into the empty seat beside him and my temples ache. But I put... Uh, but I put it down to a long day and the fact that the atmosphere in here is at least 80% cigarette smoke. You know, I'm having kind of a bad day. I was never having a bad day with you right next to me. He laughs bitterly and lifts his tumbler, squinting as he glares through the amber liquid. Well... I'm weak. I mean... Yes, I am weak. Weak in the knees for you. That's, that's fair. It's fair to call me out like that. He slams it back, finishing the drink in one. He places the glass on the bar with a loud slam, his knuckles bleeding white as he grips it like he means to break it. So tell me, what exactly do you want? You, in my room. I keep catching you staring, and I'm not looking for any company oh. tonight. Oh. If that's what you see. Oh, then I'll just awkwardly get out of the bar. Sorry, I made it really obvious. It isn't every day you see a guy in a painful, seemingly prophetic vision, and then suddenly he's real and sitting right in front of you. Shame he seems like kind of a... No, that's not a shame. That's... That's a huge turn on. It's fine. It's fine. It's actually great that he's kind of an asshole, actually. <laughs> that's great. I clear my throat, and the weight of his glare is heavy enough to make my skin crawl. I, I saw you yesterday. Uh, this is going to be really weird, but I had a vision of you. It's fine. I'm, it's fine. He raises a brow at me and then laughs a dark chuckle. I don't think you did. I was a little... No, no, no. I definitely saw you covered in ketchup from after the whole hot dog fiasco. Listen, it's fine. Also! Anna, I see it. The suspenders. Your game made me hot for suspenders, by the way. It made me so hot for suspenders that Rhapsody has suspenders as well. <laughs> You're directly my influence on my own character. His word drips with disdain and the bartender walks over to us, bottle in hand. He refills Shadow Man's tumbler. You better kiss them. With a heavy dose of whiskey without question. So, where exactly was this apparent sighting? Uh, outside in the street. Uh... <laughs> I, know, I, I feel like we need to... His, his, his shirt just... It needs to be unbuttoned a little bit more, right? I grimace. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's complicated. He's frowning now, his expression cold enough to chill me to the bone. That's what I know, it has to be him. It's those eyes, like there's nothing behind them. I lean in close and drop my voice. The quake, while it was happening, I had a vision or something. He sits a little straighter and clears his throat, his head flipping around to see if anyone's watching us, I assume. Then he leans in. Staring me down, his voice pitched low, and I feel like he's trying to find a weak spot. A kink in my non-existent armor. I have a twin, you know. It could have been him. But I guess it depends on what you saw. Uh, I saw... A hot dog fiasco. He raises his brows and I can tell if he's playing around. Or if he's threatening me. The fact that he seems unperturbed that I just told him I had a magical vision is less than comforting. The Caster Twins, you're one of them, the not missing one. My name is Blue. Oh. And yeah, I'm the not missing one. 
Very observant of you. How do how do I make him say it again? How do how do I go back? I have a tw What? My name is Blue. And yeah, I'm the not missing one. Very observant of you. I just I just needed to I just, I I missed it the first time, so I had I had to I had to do it the second time. You were covered in blood. Blood, you were covered in blood when I saw you. As if his face wasn't pale enough already, his skin drops a few shades, but quicker than he blanches, he finds his composure and has the gall to laugh in my face. Did Sinclair put you up to this? Nope. Penny? No, I haven't told her a thing. Blue surveys me again, a little harder this time, his gaze cutting deep. What else did you see? Your titties. I shake my head and Blue scoffs, rolling his bright Brilliant. eyes. Just fan fucking tastic. This is all I need. As if I don't already have enough on my plate, you give me this too. I'm, so I'm sorry. I stare at him and try to figure out exactly who he's talking to. It certainly isn't me, and it certainly isn't anyone else. Like it's a ghost. That thought has the hairs on the back of my neck rising. Do you want to tell me what's uh, what's going on here? You're apparently not at all shocked about what I thought was a pretty outlandish claim, and I'm feeling pretty damn lost. Blue downs his drink in one, grimacing as he swallows it. He hisses through clenched teeth and stands up, quick and dramatic, enough that he startles me and everyone in our vicinity. Then, he's reaching into his coat, fumbling for something. He pulls out a crumpled piece of paper and a pen, leaning on the bar as he scribbles something down. His fingers are stained with ink. I wonder that, if I stare long enough, if the black will turn to red. He shoves the paper to my hands. It has an address on it in Greek and English. I'm not going to try and, and pronounce that. Per, as I pr try and pronounce it. Periclesi ton skion. Church of Shadows. Asmodial, as Asphodel Meadows. Find me here tomorrow night. And don't tell anyone, especially not Sinclair. Got it? Uh, wait, wait. What, what was that? Find me here tomorrow night. And don't tell anyone, especially not Sinclair. Got it? Was that pretty good, Anna? Oh, you'll have to teach me. It's, yeah, it's a date. How do I know I can trust you? Because you're hot. I think about what Adrian said, about not trusting anyone here, especially if they smile at you. Well, he, he hasn't smiled at me. Blue scoffs and sticks his hand in his pockets, his shoulders hunched like he's trying to make himself look smaller. An impossible feat for a guy as tall as him. I know. He gave us his address. We're, we're coming over. And while he certainly isn't smiling, I can't decide if that's a good sign or bad. Everything else about the situation points to the latter. The last thing you have to worry about is trust right now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. He pauses and tilts his head, his bright eyes dragging over me. I didn't catch your name, did I? Oh, wait, 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 what? Wait, what? What? I didn't catch your name, did I? Wait, one more time? I didn't catch your name, did I? It's egg. It's egg. He narrows his eyes again, and I consider buying the city out of all of its crosses, holy water, too. Tomorrow night. Be there when the lights dim. What? Tomorrow what? night. What? Be there when the lights dim. Hmm? Hmm? I stuff the paper into my pocket. And you'll tell me what's going on with that hot body of yours? I lean in a little closer. My voice is... Oh, look at me trying to be all sultry. Look at me. Look at me trying to be sultry. My voice is low as it can go with all this noise. You tell me what's happening to me? Oh, they'll tell you. Ghosts? They? Blue laughs. It doesn't rain here in paradise. It only pours. Welcome to Sticks. Well, uh, this is better now. I met a whole bunch of hot people today. 
The bastard has the gall to offer me a dangerous, wicked smirk. Sweet dreams. Oh, that's cruel. And then he's gone, and with him goes my headache. It's like a weight has been lifted, the pressure turned off. Welcome to Styx indeed. No! I- No! I refuse! I don't want it to be over. Why? You can't do this to me, Chris, Anna! Suha, you can't do this to me! Can't do it. I can't wait, so... May I, may I ask a question in terms of voice acting? I know, listen, the more, the more I learn about this game, the worse it gets. I can't wait, I'm impatient. Oh my gosh, Chris, Anna, Suha, thank you so much for this, this hot dog incident of 1950. I'm like, I don't, I can't, I can't quit this game. I just have to crash your game. That's the only way I can ever stop playing.